Oh yeah, my name's Tom Metcalf, and I'm just going to tell you about the experience doing the PPL fast track with Almat. So, life before I started the training, I was just came out of school, GCSEs, first year at Solio School, which is in sixth form, and I just wasn't enjoying the academic subjects really. And I've always been passionate about just vehicles, cars, motorcycles, planes, boats, lorries, you know, you name it. I'm interested in it and I just like driving vehicles so yeah and I come from a long line of uh, pilots as well fifth generation actually now um, I, you know my dad was a pilot for Emirates my uncle was flighted by my granddad great granddad great great granddad so there's a lot of aviation in my family so it's in my blood really and fingers crossed for a genetic adaptation but it's unlikely <laughs> but yeah, it's always been in my family and you know, I sat down with my dad and spoke to my uncle about aviation and the career and uh, I just decided to go for it really and dive headfirst into the world of aviation. And I, I started to fly in March 2020, but unfortunately COVID hit after I had about three lessons, so I had to stop that and delay it for a while. And uh, yeah, that was, I had to delay it for about a year really. And obviously flying costs money, so I decided to just, you know, I was working full time, night shifts in a warehouse, you know, just trying to earn enough money for the course, because, you know, it costs about £8,000 uh, minimum, really. So, yeah, I was just working full time, trying to earn enough money for it. And I did actually start training with Almat, you know, just booking one by one, lesson after lesson. And, um, you know, with any club, if you're booking lesson after lesson, it's going to take a while, you know, because of other bookings, people trying to do the same thing, delays, weather, etc. You know, so that will take a minimum a year, really. You're going to be looking at maybe multiple years. Some people it takes a few years to do it. So a fast track is definitely the best option. If you want to do this, you know, at a decent pace with some continuity, so you make sure you're the best pilot, you, you know, you could possibly be. And also just because... Uh, you know, it's just if you want to go into a career, it's the best option for you, really, in terms of a good time scale, and also making sure you know, you know, you've got continuity and you're the best pilot you can be. But now, now after I've got my PPL, I'm actually doing class two lorry driving, you know, the HGV, just to get some money behind me, really. UPS in the warehouse isn't quite cutting it for the hour building and the ATPLs, night ratings, etc. You know, it's quite expensive stuff, really, to fly. So I'm just doing that at the moment, hope to do that for a few years just to earn some money, you know, get a, a good salary behind me whilst I'm uh, doing my ATPLs and my iron building. And uh, yeah, so yeah, whilst booking one by one, it was obviously a, you know, a little bit slow and I, I want to do this as a career, I want to be a commercial pilot at an airline. So yeah, I just got in contact with Simon whilst I was booking a lesson and he just suggested it. Uh, you know, we've got this fast track course that we think you should do where, you know, you have a whole schedule. You literally have a table with every single lesson, the hours, your instructor. And, um, you know, it's a set timetable. You know, you've got like, say, three lessons a week, which is usual. I had two or three lessons and those are all basically double slots. You know, a few single slots, but majority were double slots. So three hours, which is plenty of time to, you know, to go through all the exercises and learn all the curriculum. You know, and have a good level of continuity, so you're not forgetting things or making many mistakes because it's fresh in your mind. And yeah, it, despite you know there being a whole table and it all being so perfect, it worked out at the exact same price really. So you know, it was a no-brainer. You know, I, I basically I just had to choose it, and I think you know most other people should really. And uh, yeah, after enrolment, I went solo after about. 10 hours I think. I think there's a legal requirement for 10 hours. I think it's around that region but I had a spare 20 minutes after my lesson and Karma just said you know do you want to go solo? I think you're ready. You're up to the standard so I just said yeah and yeah it was pretty quick and I loved it. I was giggling like a little girl up there so yeah it was all good stuff. I really enjoyed it and it was really quick because the training's really regimented with Valmat. You know they have this set exercises, you do this lesson, you're doing straight level flight, climbs and descends. Next we're doing stalls, next we're doing navigation, you know, it's very regimented and linear. 
unlike some other clubs which can be a bit you know oh today we'll go do this for example you know oh we'll do this next time we're not really sure it was very regimented and they want you to pass you know they're not you know teaching students so they earn money they're teaching students to get them their license and to make them pass which is great and uh, after I enrolled I finished probably after about five six months but that was mostly due to delays really um you know i had some unfortunate weather basically every lesson i had there was some sort of dodgy weather going about low cloud base or strong winds or you know whatever it might be um uh, you know which delayed me a little bit and they were all delays that were outside anyone's control really there was a bit of maintenance on the aircraft which is outside anyone's control also uh, but yeah even though it took five months, it would have been quicker with, without the weather delays, etc. But my hour bill, you know, in terms of the hours, I sat my test at about 45 hours, which is bang on the money, the legal requirement for the hours. So in terms of the training, it was spot on, really. You know, as soon as I reached that point, I was up to the standard. And uh, I sat my test and passed it first time. So they couldn't have done anything better, really. You know, it was right on the perfect amount of hours and you know uh, throughout the course I probably found the most the things that I found most difficult were probably practice force landings and diversions because with PFLs for example you're you know you're trying to maintain the best glide speed you know looking at and monitoring the speed whilst going through all the processes like selecting a suitable field you know with certain criteria and you know identifying what went wrong with the aircraft and then trying to restart the engine if you can doing the mayday calls all whilst maintaining speed and having the field in sight and whilst you know doing the circuit around the field so that was quite difficult and complex and diversions just because you know you're having to plot the diversion on the chart whilst flying it's a bit a bit of head down work but you still have to maintain a good view and a lookout so yeah you know you're just not you don't want to be entering a spiral dive whilst plotting your diversion because that wouldn't be very good. Um, and easiest probably just circuits, I would say. You know, once you do your solo, even after your first circuit, to be honest, it's just pretty straightforward stuff. As long as there isn't a massive crosswind, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward stuff and it's always enjoyable. You know, it's a high workload, but in a short amount of time, so it's quite exciting, really. And if I if I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't do anything differently to be honest because the training was really good I followed their teachings and their tips and you know whatever advice they gave and it all worked out fine to be honest I, when I made a mistake I identified it and so did the instructor you know told me what to do next time so yeah I don't think I could have done much differently really you know they taught me well and I, I followed it as best as I could so yeah it was you know it all went really well and if I was to give some advice to people who are going to do the fast track or even just normal flying if you're watching this um, I would say get your exams done first really get them out of the way because uh, you know you can go into the training and apply the knowledge you know you've got the whole knowledge of the course you know, whether it be the physics communications how to navigate the aircraft the actual flying training you know you can apply it straight away into your training so you're not turning up doing a lesson of circuits not knowing what ailerons are or you know what the proper communications is you know how you should communicate with the controller or the FISO so uh, yeah I would say just get the exams over and done with really before so you have the right knowledge and it if anything it makes your training quicker you're not having to refresh over things learn things you know and you're not having to take longer to do a certain exercise that's what I did you know with COVID I just banged out my exams got them all done and then started the training so it made it a lot quicker and a lot easier for me as well and uh, yeah just thanks for that and good luck with your training good luck with the fast track if you're going to pick that or just with your ordinary training so yeah cheers